I apparently hit the right button. Thank you, sir. It's what I'm here for. So we're recording this meeting and the main intention from having this meeting was basically uh, making a series of talking about how art is important for the community, why art is getting different and variety way of connection between us as different people in one one universe. And of course, because Senator Bernadette is awesome and she's always posting about work and art and she's always active to attend the connection events in the community. It was one of my uh, biggest pleasure and honor to meet with you today. Thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. Anything Cornwall focused is priority for me, right? Anything uh, related to this region is really important. It's my home community. Thank you. This is one of the biggest highlights as well. You managed, you succeed to do welcoming local artists, posting about our art, encouraging us to be part more of believing that art is important. And I would love to start this um, circle by uh, welcoming everyone as well. And I will go for Richard first to introduce himself and we go in the circle. All right. I am Richard Salem. I am the executive director for Your Arts Council, Cornwall and the Counties. Uh, we are the organization behind uh, the Cornwall Art Hive, Cornwall Art Walk, uh, the Apples and Arts Studio Tour. Um, we support other organizations like the Focus Art uh, Artists Guild, et cetera, et cetera. I could go on. Um, I'm here in my capacity uh, as uh, a member of the Cornwall Art Hive to um, help run this Zoom. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> and I would love to welcome Neil with us. Neil, do you want to introduce yourself, please? He ran away. No, Neil is in the school at the moment, so. Um, there he is. I am Neil, I have to be quiet. Okay, but thank you for being here. <laughs> You're in the class now? <laughs> So when you're able to speak with us, it would be an honor to have you, Neil. I'm interested to speak with different uh, varieties of our community. Sarah, hi, Sarah. It's important to, to have this circle together, right? So we will welcome Christine. Hi, I'm in North Stormont, and um, I'm a mother at first since four kids, but um, I am passionate about writing poetry, but it's all art. It, everything I want to say is secretive, the art aspect, but I love and fascinated about the healing of art. Thank you. Thank you. And we would love to welcome Sara Good with us today. Hey, how are you, Yafa? Hi, Sara. Thank you for joining. Thank you. I'm still trying to figure out how I can see everyone at the same time. So <laughs> don't mind me. There should be a little view icon in the upper right of your screen. I'm on my cell phone just because oh. I have too many things going on my computer, but it's okay. I will be happy to attend. Thank you. So, so we're having the circle to introduce ourselves, who we are. Okay, hello. Well, then that makes more sense. I'll say a little bit more. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Sarah. I'm a city councillor here in Cornwall. Um, I am friends with Yafa, um, as well as um, the Honorable Bernadette Clément. I don't know who else is here today. I see Neil there, Neil as well, and Richard next to Yafa. Christine, I think, I don't know if we've met. And is that everyone who's here? Hi. <laughs> Yeah. We're hoping for more, but this is it so far. That's okay. I'm uh, I'm packing for a trip right now, but I'm like, I'm also here. So, you know, you should that's know my intention. Being, sorry, Sarah, you should know this is being recorded and we'll be releasing it on uh, YouTube and everywhere else we can. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. I look forward to hearing what we're going to talk about. 
Interesting. Thank you, Sarah, for being here. And thank you, everyone, for having the time, especially of course, Senator Bernadette, thank you so much. And I would love to speak with you, especially a little bit more about this intention that you started by posting pictures as soon as you went to the office, right? And I was wondering how how this uh, affecting us, right, as artists and, and inspiring that you post a, a post about art. Can you talk a little bit about that, your, your office, your environment, and your relationship with art? Mm -hmm. Sure. So hello, everybody. I am uh, speaking to you from my home office here in Cornwall, uh, which is on the traditional territory of the Mohawk people of Akwesasne. And I have a painting behind me, actually, and that is it's been there for a while since the pandemic. It's uh, local artist Aaron Doherty, uh, local artist and uh, teacher as well. Yes, I see Neil, um, which uh, I commissioned from her some years ago and which just makes me happy. And I think that's what I want to say, Yafa, about art is that um, it's it's necessary for me to feel uh, happy, to have it around. And I grew up with that uh, because my mom taught me to appreciate art and to love it and to seek it out whenever I'm, I'm feeling a little bit uh, low or in need of energy. I own uh, Yafa pieces as well, which I have uh, also in my home and also in my office. Actually, I should say, Yafa, that the, the pieces I own, well, one piece I own is, is one of yours with Kaiser because he took the photography. So I should shout out to Kaiser as well. I think it's important to um, surround yourself with art. And I have to tell you, in the Senate, I walk down a lot of halls in those in the Senate building and in the East Block where my office is located. And it's a very, um, it, there's beautiful art on the walls, but they, the art pieces don't reflect what Canada looks like today. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, it was starting to weigh me down a little bit. Uh, I would walk down those halls and just not feel like I was a part of, of what was going on. So Yafa, to your point, I made a real deliberate effort in my office, in the space that I control, to have art um, that is um, local, mm -hmm. but also that is um, from people who represent different aspects of um, community. So I have Black artists represented, I have women artists, I have Indigenous artists, Mohawk artists in particular. So I started to post to show people the artwork in my office. And I can tell you, the reaction has been really wonderful. Uh, people want to connect. Uh, they want, they, they've asked questions about the artwork. Um, the artists have reached out as well to, because artists need to feel connected to the people who enjoy their work, right? Um, so it's, it's been a really good, helpful process. And I'm just thrilled to be able to talk about it with you, you and everybody online today. Yeah. So it's an open discussion, of course. I will keep uh, asking and opening doors. But when you feel like you want to, you know, ask questions, be with us and share your opinion, you're all welcome. But um, my opinion is because you see, I have attended this um, big uh, gathering in Montreal about uh, in the university, Concordia University. And I was hoping, of course, if you can attend maybe next year, because they have been talking about how leaders in our society, in the country, are inspiring other people. So being a leader is very important when you do a step like that, appreciating art, posting art, talking with local artists, encouraging someone like me to create art, right? Making me feel belonging and want to be more shining and just do more of myself as an artist, right? Inspiring others. So you started this big step personally with me, right? When you stood up in the street 45 minutes talking with me about how is art is healing me, why I do that. And I have this, um, just a simple question about you being a leader and you know that leader, to be a leader is important, but seeing everyone and especially connection with art and artists inspiring the local community, connection between diversity and newcomers and people who want to feel belonging through art. Do you see this? Um, do you see this happening with other leaders? Because we know you do. How do you feel about this concept with the leadership? Mm -hmm. So I, I I remember that conversation with you. Uh, 
<laughs> I will always remember it on Pitt Street. Yes. Uh, yes. During probably during an art walk or some art event. And I like that you're asking about the connection with leadership. I've been thinking a lot about leadership these days because uh, the Prime Minister of, of New Zealand, you may know, um, resigned just recently. And it it affected me. I was sad to hear that because I think when you're in a leadership role, there is a vulnerability there too. I think there should be. I think you should be so personal and transparent in that process. And so for me, the fact that I rely on art and I need art as part of my work life balance, as part of my mental health process, I think I need to be honest and open about that. I need the art that I have on my walls and around me, the, the music that I listen to. I need it to reflect diversity mm -hmm. because that to me is about competence and about inclusion. The more inclusive you are, the more diverse you are, the more effective and competent you're going to be as a leader because you're seeking out all kinds of different uh, solutions and sources of inspiration. So, yeah, I think leadership is about being yourself and being transparent. And since I need art in my life, I need to talk about that in all of my leadership spaces. Oh, this is just beautiful. Thank you. You see, this is why the connection and the, the light around you, of course. So I'm moving to a word you just said, and you said something about mental health. And I'm considering this mental health with the relationship with art very important. And just to make it uh, simple as well, and again, the question is open for everyone. If you have anything to add, please, it's a circle. We're all, I am so in to make a circle. Everybody's connected. So please feel free to, to speak if you feel like it. As well, Christine was saying something about healing art. Sarah also is very supportive of art. And of course we have Jade. Hello, Jade, welcome. So it's Hi, very- Thank you. <laughs> so it's very important for me to keep highlighting that artist's relationship with mental health is very important, especially after the pandemic. Now, everybody knows that we were grateful to have a shelter and food, but it was not enough to keep our mental health um, stable, right? It was very important to connect through art, to have these Zoom meetings. So we, we tried as much as we can to go Zoom, to meet people, to try to tell everyone we're not alone through art, which is a common language. Everybody can understand. So I don't speak very well French, even just, you know, my kids are better. But art makes me connected with the community. And I get through the hard times through creating art. That heals me too. And I want to know from you, how do you think how can we encourage this concept that art and mental health, it's very important together? How can we add to our system, the mental health system, that art sessions is part of the priorities, like the massage therapy, like uh, when you go for your dental, you don't have to be needing uh, therapy you know, for therapists. You can just create art because art makes people and humans better. Can I just say hi to Jade? I also own a piece of Jade, well, several pieces of Jade Thompson's art as well, also mm -hmm. in my office in the East Block. And I see Gowry online too, her camera's off, but I'm pretty sure I have a couple of Gowry's pieces as well. I love to see, I love to know um, the artists. Yes. Hi, Gowry. I really like to, to know who, you know, who is, who has created these pieces. I think it helps to, to keep me grounded to my community and grounded to to my mental health. Just just throwing that out there. Ah, how are you, Bernadette? I like I'm to good, see you here. Yes, hi. Yeah, yeah, I see a nice you. painting in your back. Aaron Doherty, yes. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see, Um, yeah, part two. I seen her all over Cornwall doing a lot of artwork. Thank you very much, uh, Yapa. And um, yeah, my painting world is very small. It's, it's just a hobby painting. You would see some of them in my back there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, it's all COVID side effects. We st I started during COVID and it got improved. <laughs> thank you. I, I would like to listen to others' comments too. Thank you very much, Bernadette, taking the lead on it. <laughs> I just wanted to point out, uh, Burnett met, 
Bernadette mentioned music and we have a poet in Christine. Uh, art takes on many forms and infiltrates every aspect of our lives. It's not just visual arts we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. um, if, I, if I may um, share something, I was going through all kinds of crisis in life and I started taking a class upon myself. You were asking how um, art should be more present. And um, it was out there. It's something I had never done. And I started sewing. Um, and we sew um, historical costumes. And we got to take, um, uh, to learn their stories. Um, uh, we were uh, Les Filles du Roi. I think we met you earlier. Um, uh, Senator Bernadette and so I was one of them I was all dressed up like a 350 years ago my ancestors were and it was such a, I mean the healing that I got to be wearing someone else's shoes at that point in my life um, I could have never grasped the concept of it um, have I not just just to be in someone else's shoes give me a break gave me the headspace to be somewhere else at that time and gave me a purpose to be able to just share the stories of these women that were forgotten. And so I could forget myself for a, point, uh -huh. <laughs> for a bit. Um, and just a different appreciation of all these mothers and grandmothers um, that are not talked about. But it gave me that outlet to talk about these forgotten women's um, by forgetting myself, how, <laughs> I mean, um, but, um, and so the art that you were speaking about, Richard, the idea that it can take all kinds of shapes, um, it's vital, it, it's, um, and so the appreciation. So I just wanted to share that little story and how it helped me. And um, I don't reflect myself as an artist, but I can definitely appreciate how healing, and I still wear, um, my my costume as a Fides of Wax King's Daughters from New France, and just and um and so these women's um I still hold them have a different appreciation, um but uh yeah the importance of art, thank you it just reminded me of a little historical cosplay as the Gen Z right right thank you Christine for sharing and back to the question. Senator Bernadette, how do you think we can connect more about mental health and art in the community in general? Because I think we have we have to do more, to, to be honest. And I'm grateful that I'm aware now that we need to do more. So I just want to respond to Christine. I thought you looked familiar. I have pictures of you in that. <laughs> in I have pictures of you in those beautiful outfits. I do think that sewing is art, right? It's all, Richard, I like your point about expanding this out. Um, I love paint paintings and I love, I love, you know, that's a favorite, but art encompasses all the, the work that artisans do as well. Christine, it's interesting that you talk about wanting to be outside of yourself. Um, I get that, you know, uh, my mother died in 2021 and it's been a difficult grieving process. Um, we had to sell the family home and I took a lot of artwork. Well, we all did. My brother and sister took artwork from the home and it's been helpful in terms of um, my mental health, Yafa, and my grieving process to have artwork that my parents loved um, and that I grew up with. So connection to your own personal history um, is, is super important for mental health. So, yeah, I, I just think we need to do more about, and I think we need to be more honest about it. I think sometimes we're shy to talk openly about the struggles that we're having. Certainly as a leader, you're not encouraged, as a woman leader in particular, you're not encouraged to sort of say, oh, I'm feeling a bit teary-eyed or I'm feeling a bit low today. Um, and I learned during the pandemic that it would be, it was important for me to be very open about that. It's not always safe sometimes um, to be open as a woman leader, but I think it's necessary for mental health. And art was always a way to help with that. Um, Black History Month is coming up, and I know that in Ottawa, we're planning to have spoken word poetry and music at uh, some of the events in the Senate. So 
uh, poetry and spoken word are also beautifully healing um, art forms as well. Yeah, it's it, we will have as well this event in the library in Cornwall. I'm honored to be part of this as well. So I'm going to participate with um, with my amazing model, and uh, she is fantastic model. And I think one one of the pictures you own already, right? But it's yes. the to speak about the connection and culture and how can culture exchange come very easy when we practice art. So I, I again, it's an open discussion and I would love to spotlight about this point because I, I wrote some points and I just want to, to keep highlighting, but it's still, it's an open discussion. You're welcome to add questions and say what's in your heart and your mind. So I will go back and ask about the intention of making more connection between different cultures. So we have been thinking about the Aqua Sassanese uh, archive, and we think it's very important to reach, to learn, how can we do more to connect through art? I found it easy and magical. So we have been as well doing this sessions, me and Richard, basically, when we go to the uh, newcomer centers, right? And without too much talking, without, without sitting and saying, giving papers, just putting the color there and then, everybody shining and everybody sharing the story without even asking right it was actually the only way we could communicate because we were the only ones who spoke english there we had okay. a guy from turkey and yeah. brazil and oh i forget where else but my point is the only way we could communicate was to pick up a crayon and draw something and it worked yafa i wanted to get back to what you were asking about art and mental health. And um, I've, I've felt in a way personally a little bit disconnected from my own art artistic sense in a while. Um, but art has always been very close to me. And I was just thinking about my best friend, like my longest lifetime friend, and how many times that we've intentionally sat together and just made art side by side, and how cathartic those times are together. And we've done it with so many different mediums. And I, and I think, you know, like Christine was saying that she doesn't consider herself an artist. And when you don't sell your art and you kind of just make little trinkets or things that you think, well, this isn't really good enough for, for anyone else to put on their wall. It is very personal. And it's like, we are connected to art in a way where you don't need to be a professional. You don't need to be trying to sell it, but that the way that it affects you when you are spending time either with art that is made by someone else or, or with your own art, I think is just so special. I saw as soon as Jade came on, I was in my bedroom and I, and I pointed up overhead cause I had one of her, I have one of her paintings in my bedroom and I've got a couple more in my living room here. And, uh, definitely like I love having local artists I've got some, one of Brett's pieces here and Lee Latticer this is the one of the smokestacks from Dom Tar um, and of course my my uncle uh, JP Leclerc is is a well-known artist in town who who uses so many different mediums and is so connected with like the political end of things as well and I think you know not only is art an important part for trying to work through some of our mental health issues, but that when we're stressed and depressed and grieving and feeling very heightened emotionally, I think that is sometimes when we make the best art, <laughs> the most beautiful art. It, it comes from pain because it's like, it comes right out of your heart. So um, I'm really happy to be Part of this discussion today um, with some really wonderful people because I know in my life I feel myself missing art and I feel that little space that I have carved out in the past which I know to be helpful to me this is like the 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 signal to say you need to carve that little piece out of your life again and, and make time for it because it's so important. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing. It's very important to, for, for the individual person level to connect with art. And I'm seeking to, uh, again, go to more bigger scale because I, I practice art daily, right? It saved my life. Art was a way of surviving for me and expressing myself and healing as well. And here, I if I got this in my hand, I'm happy to share it with everyone. But like, let, let's go back to the idea of doing more of the community connections through art, not as a show, right? So the intention is to make more connections through art when people are creating themselves. 
So the, the Cornwall Art Hive, what we're doing, building the ecosystems, and now I'm trying to reach for, for more, for the city of the Cornwall and the, the Aquasasnese leaders to see if we can make this happen. Because I think as artists, just to put the art there is amazing. But how, if people can create art together, how the result of healing together, the group healing, big session when people create art together. So uh, do you have any comments about that? About group art sessions? Mm -hmm. Well. You know where I sit on that. <laughs> yes, I know you're with me. <laughs> My car is still full of supplies from the last one. But so here's here's my issue with some of that. It's that I have um I'm an art appreciator, and I definitely have it as part of my you know mental health practice. In order, I have to have it around me. I have to have it mean something. I have to be con connected to the artists. Um. I, I like what you just said, Sarah. It, there, there can be some political connections too. For me, I love politics and I like that there's that art can be connected to politics. I just don't feel talented or I just feel insecure about being able to create art. I am like a lawyer and a talker and somebody who, you know, um, does other kinds of work, but not that kind of work. And so I always feel very intimidated in in anything group related that's art related. I love to appreciate it, but I never feel good about participating. I know that's me and I, please push back, but I have an issue, I, I struggle with it. That's one if, of the founding, uh, oh. sorry, Neil. Yeah. If I could jump in on that point, um, that 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 is a common problem with uh, a lot of artists, particularly young artists who I, I deal with mainly. Um, and it's a case of, uh, so sometimes you have to not worry about product and just worry about process. And uh, it's, it's not a, if you're with a good art group, it's not about judgment. Unfortunately, in my role, I do have to judge. I do have to mark. Um, but that's also why I have an art club, which is totally different. And it's a place where kids can just come. And like I said, it's more, we're concerned about the process not necessarily the product. And it's just this idea of, yes, creating in community and not necessarily worrying. I didn't call myself for an artist for a while until one of the art walks when I was speaking with some people and I was you know, standing next to some of the people at the Kaluan Gallery, which unfortunately is no longer open, but, um, and I was saying, oh yeah, yeah, you want to talk to the artists over there. And one of them made it very clear, no, no, you're, you're an artist. You create, you do things, so you don't have to worry about your product and say, okay, well now I'm an artist because I painted this. No, no, it's it's all about it's all about the the enjoyment of doing it. So if you ever wanted to come into a community gathering like that, Bernadette, you would be more than welcome and no judgment. Definitely. Of course. I have a friend here. Her hands is, um, I'm sorry, I can't see your name, my friend, but you're welcome. Ke yes, please. You you want to say something? Yes. Hi, yeah, my name is Kit. Um, I know Jade. What's up, Jade? Um, um, yeah, so I, I just want to chime in. My name's Kit. I'm actually from Akwazesne. I moved back home from California about a year ago. Um, I actually am planning on opening up a studio. I've tried to keep it. I've tried to figure out what I wanted to do while I moved back home. And the art is thriving here. I love it. I love it. Um, I moved away uh, many, many, many moons ago because I couldn't find what I wanted here. And I decided to just kind of move, go to school in New York, keep moving around. I lived in the South. Um, anyways, long story short, I just decided... Um, I want to do a lot of classes that kind of hinder on like mindfulness because I also work with the holistic, the holistic life uh, foundation that's also here in Akwazesne. It's in the schooling systems, and we're we're pushing it different programs. But as far as mindfulness, um, Neil, I kind of I kind of liked what you're. I definitely liked what you said about like having the club where kids could come in and just it's about the process, and that's what I think mindfulness is too. It's it's like being in the moment. And um, Bernadette, you said you're not an artist. I have seen some art come out of people who say that all the time. And they have like these intricate 
like almost OCD type of designs, which I can't create. And I, I almost love it because there's a, there's there's certain things that you get pulled out if you take a moment to do some breath work, maybe put yourself in the moment. And um, I love working with kids because they they don't they don't have any of that, um, you know. They some of them will just draw and they're like, "This is what I wanted. This is what it is," and they'll be like, "On to the next." While we're stuck, kind of criticizing ourselves, <laughs> of like, "Wow, I made a mistake," you know. But that's it is about the process, and I, I really like. Um, I'm sorry I'm late. I I got a I have a a, a slight cold. Um, but I just wanted to jump in and say, like, I love what what is happening here in the North Country right now. Thank you for joining and definitely we would love to connect with you more. So you could be our first gate to to build in the Ecosas needs. We we actually the, the project is in the office at the in the with with Justin, the mayor of Cornwall at the moment. And we are discussing how can we reach more through art, building community bridges, I will say. And again back to the, the main intention of opening more, right? So who have more ideas to share? And as well, I want to always point to that Bernadette is always have been supporting and, and coming and encouraging and i think if we want to to put this um i have this uh dreams that we will have a card with uh with mental health program that's including art i have a dream that in every neighborhood we will have a space for the community not in a fancy space because we learned that when we have it in a studio people think it's for artists not for them so how can we make art for people not for the artists the artist is creating anyway this is their passion this is their work but how can we build more in this um art for the people and the question is for you bernadette <laughs> yes. Um, well, first, I, first, I just want to say, hey, hey, Kit, um, so glad you're you're back uh, in this area. I think that's really cool. I think people are coming back. I understand what you mean when you say sometimes you look around and you you don't see what you need, um, but it feels like there's a lot going on in the community now, thanks to a lot of the people that you see on the screen. So that's uh, that's fantastic. I think the key, Yafa, is to go back to kids, right? I I get caught up in my head around stuff, right? And and so and kids don't do that as much. It's just so it's they're so free uh, in terms of expressing themselves. So I don't know. I, I keep coming back to thinking about what Neil was saying in the club and a club and keeping kids. Um, and me as an adult needing to be inspired by that as opposed to being stuck with this. Mm, I can't do this uh, type of mentality because um, I think you're right. Yeah, but the creation and the, the creation is important. I enjoy it. I have it around me and I take a lot of there's a lot of healing for me just to have it up on my walls and in my spaces. But the creating piece is something that I feel disconnected from. And I, I guess, yeah, I guess I would need I would need more help around that that process. Yeah. You just got to let go. Yes. And join us with the Cornwall Archive, right? We have this <laughs> key events, right? All well, the that's, time. that's the whole point of it, right? You know, I was, we were sitting at an event in the library, or at least I think it was the library. Anyway, the kid was busy doing this three-dimensional awesome thing, and the father was sitting there on his phone. And I looked at him, and I said, pick up a crayon. <laughs> and he did. And he was sitting there after the kid had disappeared, he was doing his own thing. It's just a matter of sitting down and doing it. And I have the same fight. I don't consider myself an artist. Uh, I, I consider myself a technician. I, I do technical art. Um, but when I sit down to create, something always ends up on the paper. Whether it's good or not, doesn't matter. It's the activity of doing it. It's just the, the letting loose on the paper, yeah. whether it's good or not, whether it's aesthetic or not. I, I just, I find that very enjoyable. And and again, that's what the art hive is supposed to all be about. Right. But but Richard, you show up at events in big floppy hats and you do improv, don't you? So I, I think you're an artist. Okay, a visual <laughs> artist is what I meant. And and you forgot that I also do audio books, just, you know, getting it in there. Yeah. Dad, I've seen you uh, right. <laughs> quite a bit too in your capacity as a uh, as a lawyer and a politician, so. Let's call that some art as well. 
Yeah, exactly. The the art of public address. Yeah, and the art of connection. I'm getting pushback. I'm getting pushback. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> and this is the art of connection as well. Gentle, I was thinking, gentle pushback. Gentle. <laughs> yeah, love, love to you, of course. And this the art of connection that I was talking with uh, Liv Big Tree, and Liv uh, is a, a dear friend of mine, and she left she lived between territories, right? And when when I saw her here in Cornwall, one of the big intentions for me as well, right, as a newcomer to the to the whole country, I was thinking it's very important for me to get to know about her through art, right? But I think it was very uh, easy connection when we sit and create together, and we build in the uh, Ontario Culture Days event, something called the art of connection, how we can reach to each other through art, right? How can we just sit together and, and create something small and we talk about our stories? It's opening an easy connection because it's not a session that we must talk. It just, the creation leads us to relax. I found in the old days and the old tribes, the circle of sitting together and doing one big carpet, you know, it's healing or sitting together and make one big uh, wall and we all part of it. So the belonging idea, right? So we had this uh, intention of doing in the summer, um, coloring the skin of Cornwall. So we asked people to give us um, their walls in the backyards to paint with the neighborhood, with the kids. And when you do that, and I did this before in the refugee camps, people feel more uh, belonging to the space, belonging to the area, wanted to be clean, taking picture with it. So they are part of the building. So let's go again for the idea of the leadership and the city role. So it's not this job, their job. It's also our job. We do this together, right? And you're doing amazing, Bernadette, and this inspiring people. In, in doing belonging and being part of the community, being part of what's happening, right? So everybody have a role to participate and be, and through, I, I'm not a politician at all. And I, I, I think I will be terrible, <laughs> but I think I'm inspiring people to do art, which is very, for me, it's healing and connecting and easy access to the heart. And I don't have really a question in this matter. I just want to share with you experience. Who did experience something like that and feel that it's, it's actually, did work. I, I was a stranger, and I'm not when I create art. How about that? Yeah. So I guess the question is, how has uh, shared art uh, led to your having a feeling of community, your having a feeling of belonging? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I've got, my, my, my story here in Canada is this, right? I created art, I belong. Who, who wants to share more? Yeah. I'm just going to chime in. Um, we spoke of the children and here I am in a very rural area. And so it's it's another world to even think of making art or just it's another world. <laughs> and so um, we had the community gather funds to have our own um, structure for the children. But we also included the one guy we all know who's amazing at art and he created this big public mural right within that play area um and you know years went by and the paint was not fresh anymore so he started a new fundraising and um he recreated and within his creation he would put um at one point it was these. So all the different these would have the name of the different sponsors within the community. So people want to participate because they want to have their name on a B and then there's the funds coming and we belong to this. Um, and so the idea of belonging and the kids, well, I guess it's for the kids, right? <laughs> but I mean, everybody um, had the chance to, and nobody's really the artist. So we let the artist have his place but we all um were able to make him share his talent um and so we did it again um so i think um having more space for public arts um visiting um my brother in northern bc and we take the time to go see all these incredible murals um and they're like touristic attractions um so I want to say if we can make that happen, I mean, out here we see in Prescott Russell, they have the pop silos. So they have this incredible um, murals on the silos. So I think if we can include even more art 
to have it for a touristic reason, whatever it is for, I think it would be beneficial for everybody. Thank you. Very important. Point. You and just about every study I've ever read. But it's very hard to find money for stuff like that. Uh, the murals that we do have in Cornwall were done by the wall dogs in, I don't know, 2010 or something like that. Um, I believe they do them for free. Um, it's just hard to find public money for that, but it's happening. I mean, just right outside this office, there's a huge mural on the side of a building that uh, the building owner paid to have put up and it's awesome. And we have the, in the park, we yeah. have the, the walls. So we have been so grateful that we connected with Kat Ridrick and from the city of Cornwall with the support of the city, we managed to have these two small walls. So it's like small mirrors, right? I pronounced it right, mirrors? Mirrors, yeah. Thank you. And from here, we in, invited, and we hear, you see the youth have been coming more because youth want to spray and want to have this freedom of doing the spray paint. So it's kind of legal because it's public art. And I think the intention with the city was to build more public spaces for art. When people can come sit together, it's not really a session and just being together, creating together. And having the wall was important to let go and spray and just go crazy. And it was good to go crazy in a good direction, if this is the right uh, words, I guess, but it's very important to let go with dance, with getting together, with creating together, feeling safe and not judged. And just the, the idea of opening to, to accept each other, right? So I think in, in Cornwall, because this is my home now, that's what I'm trying to build and make it more in the light. Thank you, Bernadette, for welcoming me in Cornwall. You made me stay, <laughs> thank you. So the intention is to build more and to, to have this gift, which is, the topic of our session today that art is medicine so how you think art is medicine healing the community i'm i'm so concerned about the group healing process i think after war after um big immigration process after going through hard times after trauma with kids or you know hard, hard depression times art is medicine and it works very equally with the idea of healing therapy and medicine, which is, you know, bills. So do you have something to say about that, Bernadette? How do you think art is medicine? Yeah, I want to come back to some of the community stuff that, um, that Richard raised in terms of, and Christine did too, you know, when you talk about the government, right? Let's say the municipal government, you talk about economic development and tourism. That's a big part of the conversation always, right? Budgets, Sarah, you'll know all about this already. Um, but really you have to speak of community health as being the most important factor. You're not gonna be able to be a tourist attraction if your community is unhealthy or if members of your community are suffering. You're not gonna be able to get all this beautiful economic development and tourism if people are suffering in your community. I, I believe that. So public funds need to be dedicated to social development, to art, because that's about health and community health. And once you have a healthy community, everybody's gonna wanna join you. And pride. Everybody's gonna yeah. wanna move. Yes, and so, you know, that sense of belonging has to start with people feeling like they can be healthy here and that people care for them here. So that is linked to art. And that does mean that governments, and I'll just start with local governments, have to be supportive financially of art projects. It just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So art is medicine and healing and connecting people together. And I I will say, I don't know any other way of healing except we just get together and create art. I couldn't find anything more effective uh, and I have been working with SAS and asylum seekers and, uh, you know, um, refugee camps, kids who went through hard times. And I'm not a doctor at all. And I didn't study to do this. I just found it healing my, me. And when it did, creating art is healing. I have been able to heal others and share with them the process. And I think this is why the circle is important and the trust of trying art to heal each other, right? And I don't really have more questions. I just want to always encourage if you have ideas or you have more way to push 
So let's go back to our community, Cornwall. So do you think the art center that we're, how many years are we waiting for? Two years, three? Uh, well, yeah. I guess there are people who could say 30, 40. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Richard. Oh my goodness. You're right. I just, no, I've been waiting for two years already. So I was thinking, Aha, uh -huh, but you see, away of the center, we already established things already, right? So how, and of course, Sarah, if you want to add to this topic, how, how do you think we can build more public art spaces, not only an art center, you know, or an opera, like uh, just public art spaces. And especially these days, I can see all over the area, there's empty um, shops, stores, right? No one is renting, no one is using. Do you think this something like that can be a community art space? So it's not a fancy gallery. And again, it's not for artists, it's for the people, for non-artists. Well, I think there's two sides to it, that there is room for, and there should be more community-driven art. Like I, it feeds placemaking to have public art. It makes people go places and stay and get together and it drives community and community drives it. I love the picnic tables that we started putting around our community. And one of the ideas that I had had just, you know, of the many floating around in my brain are how cool would it be if every year or whatever, I don't know how often we would do this, we would drop off a picnic table at every school and say, okay, this is either gonna be for one class or you each class picks a board and, and you, paint the whole thing and it will get dropped off at a random park in the community. Well, what better reason to go then visit a park than to say, oh my gosh, hey, mom and dad, we got to go to this park because the picnic bench that our school did last year is at this park. Anyways, this is like one example, but I think that there is so much room to allow for that expression to have a home in public spaces where people can feel connected um, and they have that outlet. I also really think that there is, it, it is important to highlight, you know, the artists who are being paid the big bucks to do their art are also in that position for good reason. And we have so many fabulous local artists that I would love to see like sculptures and murals and pieces that as you walk around the community, you get to experience and that you don't need to go necessarily into an art center. I am very supportive of the art center and the concept of an art center um, as a whole. I think that that would be a great asset to our community and that it would help us in so many ways um and as we were talking about the dollars for for murals and I'm like how much are we talking right I really it's so hard to know the exact Thank numbers you. <laughs> because you're so strapped we're just about to get into budgeting in a few weeks <laughs> and I'm nervous because there are things that I think are important to invest in and everyone has and then there's all the operational stuff that needs to happen and so just to carve out like a teeny tiny fraction of the entire budget for art well we should be and and when you if you if we can put that into our baseline and say what are we willing to dedicate to arts and culture in our community as its own item and have that be an expense that is built in that we know. And I mean, I don't know how much that budget would be and I'm certainly not the only person part of deciding that, but I would love to see more community art, absolutely. If you look at it from a perspective of return on investment, it gets easier. Every study says that the return on investment is huge. So consider it as an investment in the community, but I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you that or that this is the first time you've heard that. Well, and I'm not the person who needs to be convinced either. <laughs> That's the thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really grateful for this discussion and I'm so happy that everybody have a chance and a time to share. And let's hope that the Austin is going to, I know they're doing their best. I know there is lots of effort and lots of donations happening. And I really appreciate the effort. I think I just can't wait to start more, right? I wanted to be able to, even, you know, in the summer, we can have, I, I was planning to ask uh, in downtown here in Cornwall, can we have the corners to do like art, small things in the middle, you know, like in the subway in Montreal and be 
places when just art is there. I have this uh, dream that art will be easy and accessible for everyone. So without making it very in frame or in a box, so we can just have this ah, 15 minutes of dance with the community every weekend, something like that, you know? Why not? I mean, like, really, why not? It's getting people together, it's healing, it's opening, and it's connection that it's easy and doesn't cost much. And I, I hope we will uh, we'll go ahead with doing more. Thank you so much, everyone, for being with us today. It was uh, a pleasure, an honor, always. Oh, do we have to go? And, yes, I thank you for that. <laughs> this And I want to thank, of course, especially uh, Senator Bernadette. Thank you so much. I love you. And I can't wait love to you back. Soon. So yeah, today is my first day. Thank you for your gift for being us with us today. And I consider this is your gift for me to, to do the Zoom, speaking about art is healing, art is medicine, art is important for the connection and for, for everyone, right? Right, Mr. Richard? Not me. Obviously. He's, <laughs> he's with me all, all the sessions, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Yafa, for all of this. You're you're brilliant. Um, a real a real ray of sunshine in our community. Uh, you just said dancing. That I feel uh, that I feel good about in terms of my <laughs> my own capacity. So yes, if you do some awesome. dancing in community, I'll be there. I'm a little less shy about that. I dance in my living room every night and sometimes do videos. Sometimes. Okay, yeah, we're gonna hold it. you that. We're gonna hold you to that for the next um, art walk. You have to okay. come to the next art walk and do belly I, dancing with you. I was okay, belly dude. dancing at the last art walk. <laughs> All right. You heard me say More it. More belly and less dancing, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you for joining. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. <laughs> it has to happen. <laughs> okay, so Thanks, this everybody. is our date for the June, June 23rd August. is the date for the next art walk. So okay, okay. 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 It's See on. I right, keep everybody. writing Thank it down. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you so Bye. much. Real, Thank you so much, quick. Richard and Yafa. Yafa, I, I have this on, on my book bag. Yes. Oh, I, I met yes. you at, yeah, I, I think our fates have, uh, our, our, we were supposed to meet because I, I met you at Cornwall Pride and um, I was at your table and you actually gave this to me and it was like, I had to, now I keep it on my book bag where all my important art business is. I, okay, I, yeah. You send me your email. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll see you in that. I'm coming. I'll see you soon. Okay. I'm going to close this. Okay, bye, bye, folks. Cool. Connection, connection. Cool. Bye, everybody. Cool. Salut. Bye. Bye, Sarah. Bye.